Hello, I'm Sonal Kulkarni Zoshi, and this is the second module on language contact. The objectives of this module are the following. First, to introduce students to the idea that particular outcomes or products of language contact emerge in particular socio-historical contexts. And second, to introduce students to some of the important mechanisms of language change in contact situations. In the first module on language contact, we saw that languages spoken by bilinguals influence each other. Historically, language contact has occurred under conditions of social inequality resulting from war, colonialism, slavery, migration, etc. We also consider the typical outcomes of language contact. In the classification of contact outcomes, we saw that a broad distinction is made between transfer of two types of linguistic material between languages. First, the transfer of linguistic forms and form meaning units from a source language to a recipient language, which is labeled as borrowing or matter replication. And second, the transfer of grammatical meanings and functions from the source or model language to the replica language. This process is labeled as grammatical replication or pattern replication. Thus, the transfer of words such as bandobast, gherao, chutney, avtar, banglo, chita, etc. from Hindi into Indian English would be a case of borrowing or matter replication. But Indian English constructions such as I like hot hot tea or why you are not wearing the uniform today or I'm thinking that I'll go to the market today are examples of pattern or grammatical replication. These constructions would be judged as ungrammatical by native speakers of English. In this module, we'll focus on the processes or the mechanisms by which linguistic features are transferred across language boundaries. We'll consider both processes which involve unidirectional transfer, for example, interlanguage, substratum, as well as mechanisms which involve bidirectional transfer, for example, convergence. The particular mechanisms which have been discussed by contact linguists include interlanguage, code switching and code mixing, substratum, coineization, convergence, pigeonization and creolization, and grammaticalization. Let's begin with the mechanism of interlanguage. The term interlanguage is taken from the field of second language acquisition and is used to refer to intermediate stages resulting from imperfect learning in the course of acquiring a second language. This results from learners applying their knowledge of one language in learning another language. The interlanguage may be a temporary phase or it may get fossilized or institutionalized if it is used as a primary means of communication among speakers of mutually unintelligible indigenous languages and not with native speakers of the language. The examples of Indian English constructions we saw earlier would be a case in point. Let's now look at the mechanism of code switching and code mixing. The alternate use of both languages by a fluent bilingual such that some portions of a given sentence are in one language and other parts in another language is referred to as code switching. When the alternation between languages broadly involves heavy use of non-basic vocabulary of foreign origin, the term code mixing is used. Here is an example of Marathi English code mixing. After all, Marathi compulsory paije. कारण आपल्या मराठी टंग मधून आपले थॉट्स जितके क्लिअरली एक्सप्रेस करता येतात तितके फॉरेन लँग्वेज मधून करणं डिफिकल्ट आहे इंग्लिश मात्र मस्ट बी ऑप्शनल अ ग्लॉस ऑफ दिस एक्झाम्पल इन इंग्लिश इज पहाप्स अननेसेसरी गिव्हन द हेवी प्रेझन्स ऑफ इंग्लिश वर्ड्स इन वॉट वुड बी जज टू बी मराठी सेंटेन्सेस अ कोच स्विच ऑन दी अदर हँड इन्वॉल्व्ह अ मूवमेंट फ्रॉम वन लँग्वेज इन टू अनादर ॲट मेजर सिंटॅक्टिक बाउंड्रीज Here is an example of a Marathi English code switch. To kal mala bhetla, teva manala ki he had returned the books long ago, which could be glossed as, 
When he met me yesterday, he said that he had returned the books a long time ago. Here's another example of a Hindi-English code switch. I will not tolerate such nonsense. I said that I will not tolerate such nonsense. The phonotactics of the code switched speech comes from the speaker's dominant language. Sociolinguists are interested in understanding the communicative and the stylistic functions of code mixing and code switching, as well as the acceptability or the grammaticality of code switched speech. At times, Heavily code mixed languages become institutionalized. A stable mixture of two languages becomes a primary means of communication for a community. Such languages are referred to as mixed languages. The case of media lengua in Ecuador is a well documented example of a mixed language. It is an admixture of Spanish vocabulary and Quechua or Quechua phonotactics morphology and basic vocabulary. Apparently, this variety of language emerged as a link language between an older monolingual Quechua speaking generation and younger monolingual Spanish speaking generations. The Ma'a language spoken in Tanzania, which has Bantu grammar and Cushitic vocabulary is another example of a mixed language. Let us now move on to understanding substratum as a mechanism involved in language contact and language change. In contact situations which result from a local linguistic group being conquered or surrounded by a larger group, the language of the invaders may gradually replace the indigenous languages of the region through a process of slow language shift. You may recall that language shift was discussed in the first module. In the process of shifting to the language of the conquerors, the speakers of the indigenous languages transfer traits of their own languages or language to the target language. The invader's language thus acquires a substratum of indigenous language or languages. Colonial varieties of English, including Indian English, which are distinctly different from native varieties of English at the phonological, morphological, syntactic and lexical levels, have acquired a substratum of local Indian languages. The Norse invasion of England is another example in which language shift by newcomers led to structural change in the receiving language, which is a rare type of change. It was perhaps possible only because of the very large numbers of Scandinavians involved and the intimacy of their contacts with the pre-existing population. In the 13th century AD, the third person plural English H initial pronouns were in competition with the borrowed initial TH forms. The borrowed forms, that is the TH forms, gradually replaced the original pronominal forms. Substratum based explanations have also been offered for prehistoric contact situations. For example, the Dravidian structural element in the modern Indo Aryan language Marathi has been explained as substratal influence which has survived. The structural influence includes syntactic and semantic features such as the following. First, the presence of a participial construction in addition to the presumably inherited relative correlative construction for relativizing a nominal expression. Second, the presence of a quotative construction in addition to the presumably inherited construction using a complementizer for marking reported speech. Third, the distinction between inclusive and exclusive first person plural pronouns in Marathi. And fourth, the distinct lexical items meaning to wear stitched clothes and to wear unstitched clothes, galne, ani nesne, and so on. Looking at such examples, some scholars, for example, Franklin Southworth, have proposed that a form of Dravidian was spoken in today's Marathi speaking region in prehistoric times. When the earliest speakers of Indo Aryan descended to the south of the Vindhyas, they came in contact with speakers of the Dravidian language. The latter, in the process of shifting to the Indo Aryan language of the local elites, 
carried over linguistic traits of the original language to the, their version of the second language. The prehistoric Indo-Aryan language variety with the Dravidian substratum is said to have been the linguistic precursor of present-day Marathi. We now proceed to look at the next mechanism of language contact and change, koineization. Koine is a Greek word which means common language. It is a special kind of a link language which emerges as a result of accommodation among mutually intelligible dialects. Koineization proceeds through dialect mixing followed by a process of simplification and at times a process of reallocation. The process is characterized by the gradual loss or erasure of linguistic differences which have traditionally distinguished dialects of a language. The term koineization is used to refer to two types of contact situations. The first, where a particular regional variety of a language is deregionalized and is consequently perceived as sufficiently neutral to be used as a link variety by speakers of the language. For example, Koine Greek. The Koine developed from the Attic Greek dialect, which belonged to the city of Athens, which was culturally and politically influential following the conquests of Alexander the Great in the 4th century BC. The city dialect lost some of its markers and developed features shared by other Greek dialects in a process of leveling. For example, the Attic consonant cluster, the geminated T, changed to a geminated S of the majority of dialects, as in glotta changing to glossa, which means tongue or language in Greek. The second type of contact situation involves immigrant speakers of mutually intelligible dialects in the colonial world. For example, Fiji Hindi or Fiji Bath, which is an Indo-Aryan link language used by immigrants of Indian descent in the island country of Fiji in the South Pacific Ocean. Fiji Hindi is based on an Eastern variety of Hindi influenced by Avathi, Bhojpuri and Bihari Hindi. We now proceed to the next mechanism of language contact, conversions. As we saw at the beginning of this module, at times language contact involves not the direct copying of forms, but replication of the abstract organizational pattern of a construction from the model language into the recipient language using inherited linguistic material of the recipient language. In other words, Contact-induced structural change does not involve transfer of or copying of forms. Rather, the change is manifested through shift in meaning, distribution, or organization of inherited material inspired by an external model. Such changes are referred to as convergent developments and are typical of linguistic areas. Convergence occurs in context of long-standing bilingualism. It is a bidirectional process in which the languages spoken by the fluent bilingual converge on a common grammar. This is also referred to as isomorphism. The convergence may or may not be modeled on either language. To illustrate this, language X may converge towards a grammatical feature or a grammatical construction in language Y or language Y may converge towards language X, or both languages X and Y may converge towards a third grammatical construction. This notion of convergence is evoked to explain the common linguistic features across the language families in India or South Asia. Speakers of the four or maybe six language families in South Asia happen in close proximity of each other for several centuries. This close contact has led to the emergence of the notion of India as a linguistic area. Languages belonging to the various families have come to share linguistic features not found in languages of the same family outside South Asia. MNO first made a proposal for South Asia as a linguistic area. 
His evidence came in the form of a number of shared linguistic traits. Subject, object, verb, word order, presence of retroflex consonants, presence of reduplication and echo word formation processes, and so on. A number of mini or micro convergence areas too have been identified in South Asia. For example, the tribal belt in Central India, Northeast India, etc. South Asian cases of convergence are often characterized by little or absence of transfer of vocabulary items. The process of convergence in contact situations and its linguistic outcomes in South Asian context are well documented. The development of Dakini as a case of extreme convergence of a variety of Hindi Urdu in contact with Telugu. The loss of the inherited natural gender system in demonstrative pronouns in the non-literary Dravidian language Brahui, which is attributed to contact with the Indo-Aryan language Balochi and the development of modern aspect markers in tibeto kinori languages are some cases in point. An overview of some early work in this field may be found in the uh, 1974 volume of the International Journal of Dravidian Linguistics, Volume 3. Conversions in South Asia has often involved transfer of linguistic traits across language families. We will now look at some specific examples of conversions in South Asia. Our first example is the village of Kupwad. The multilingual village of Kupwad in southern Maharashtra is a celebrated case of convergence and was first reported by Gumpers and Wilson in 1971. The village in Sangli district at the Maharashtra Karnataka border is home to speakers of two Indo Aryan languages, Marathi and Hindi Urdu and one Dravidian language, Kannada. While the village elites, the Jains and Lingayats, are speakers of Kannada, the low-caste Hindus and Muslims in the village are speakers of Marathi and Hindi-Urdu, respectively. Marathi is also the official state language of the Sangli district or the state of Maharashtra. Speakers of the three languages have lived in close proximity with each other for over 300 years. The villagers depended on each other for economic reasons and interacted with each other on a daily basis. Most men in the village were bilingual. Gumpers and Wilson noted that the long-term close contact and bilingualism had led to the development of a converged grammatical structure for all the three languages, while they remained distinct at the morphophonemic or the lexical level. Either Kannada or Marathi had provided the model for the conversions. For example, varieties of Marathi and Hindi Urdu outside this contact, re contact region have grammatical gender, but Kupar varieties of Marathi and Hindi Urdu have semantic gender as in Kannada. Let us look at an example. You'll also find this example in the e-text. Where standard Urdu has the sentence Vaha Nadi Ai and standard Marathi has Titha Nadi Ali, standard Kupwad Urdu has Vaha Nadi Aya and Kupwad Marathi has Tith Nadi Ala. Kupwad Urdu and Kupwad Marathi sentences are modeled on the Kannada Yalli Vari Pattu, which could be classed as a flood came there. Gumpers and Wilson has suggested that the contact situation had led to complete isomorphism in the three languages. However, a recent revisit of Kupwad has revealed that the contact has introduced variability in the three grammars and not isomorphism. What could be the motivation for such convergence at the structural level but maintenance of distinct vocabularies? The motivation is seen in a reduced psychological load for the bilingual speaker who can operate with a single grammar. At the same time, the separate vocabularies flag the separate identities of the two languages. The problem of communication in having to use two autonomous codes is reduced when their grammatical boundaries are fluid, as Anamalai has pointed out. A second example of convergence is the relative clause formation in Kannada. Sridhar 2006 observes that the preferred mode of relative clause formation in Dravidian 
is by turning the main verb into a participle and deleting the co-referential noun as in Kannada. Hasiru sire uttiruva hengasu nanna hendati. Green sari wearing green sari wearing woman is my wife. In addition to this construction, Kannada now has another construction closely modeled on the Indo-Aryan. Yava hengasu hasiru sire uttidalo avalu nanna hendati. Which woman green sari is wearing? She is my wife. The woman who is wearing a green sari is my wife would be the gloss for both the sentences. We also note that this construction is one of the few cases in Dravidian where the main verb in a subordinate clause is not changed into a non-finite form and a co-referential subject is not deleted. Natkarni and Sridhar have argued for the Indo-Aryan origin of this construction. A third example of convergence is the mini linguistic area in central India described by Reddy 2017. Languages belonging to three language families, Dravidian, Indo Aryan, and Munda, are in contact in the multilingual tribal belt in central India. Munda is a tribal Dravidian language spoken in southern Orissa, in contact with Oriya, an Indo Aryan language, and Parengi and Gurum belonging to the Munda sub-branch of Austroasiatic language family. The Dravidian and Munda tribals are bilingual in Adivasi Oriya, which is a local link language. Such bilingualism has existed for centuries and has left an impact on the grammatical structures of the tribal languages. Symbiosis among the structures of languages of the three groups is evidenced in the following example. We take the example of the numeral system in these languages. While the numeral system in both Indo-Aryan and Dravidian languages is decimal, 10 is the base for formation of higher numerals in these languages. That in Munda languages is vigesimal, using 20 as base for forming higher numerals. However, Munda, the Dravidian tribal language, shows an influence of both Munda and Indo-Aryan. Munda higher numerals are formed using 20 as base, as in Munda languages, and it has borrowed Indo-Aryan lexical material in its number forms above the numeral 2. Look at these numerals. 21 in Munda is Kude Rundi, 20 plus 1. The numeral 30 is Kude Dos, which is 20 plus 10. The numeral 99 is Sari Kudi Unis, which is 4 into 20 plus 19. The numeral 140 is Saat Kudi. The underlying grammar is 7 into 20. And the numeral 1000 is Dui Kude Kudi Dos Kudi, which is 2 into 20 into 20 plus 10 into 20. We finally turn to the processes of pigeonization and creolization as mechanisms of change in language contact. As we saw in the first module, pigeons are an extreme outcome of contact between speakers of mutually unintelligible languages who, nevertheless, need to communicate with each other. The process of pigeonization necessarily involves a radical syntactic simplification and reduction in vocabulary. Multilingual urban centers such as Mumbai or Bombay witness large-scale migration from different parts of the country. These migrants form the less or uneducated low socioeconomic stratum in the cities. Often, a grammatically simplified speech variety develops to fulfill the communicative needs of this social stratum. Update 1974 documents the case of one such urban pigeon, the Bombay variety of Hindi-Urdu. He observes the speech variety has on undergone simplification of structure and it also reveals new constructions modeled on Marathi. The simplification includes grammatical features such as the following. A single pronominal form tum, invariant for the degrees of politeness seen in standard Hindi. Absence of plural and oblique forms of nouns, for example, 
वो आदमी को पकड़ो कैश दैट मैन द इन वेरियंट फॉर्म हेयर इज वो एबसेंस ऑफ जेंडर अग्रीमेंट दो ग्रामेटिकल जेंडर इज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ द स्टैंडर्ड वराइटीज ऑफ बोथ मराठी एंड हिंदी एंड सिंप्लीफिकेशन ऑफ द वर्ब पैराडाइम यूजिंग अ सिंगल वर्ब फॉर्म फॉर ईच टेंस फॉर एग्जाम्पल मैं तुम वो हम जाएगा द इन वेरियंट वर्ब फॉर्म जाएगा इज यूज विद ऑल पर्सनस दिस कुड बी क्लास्ट एज आई यू ही शी और वी विल ऑल गो आइडेंटिकल सिंगुलर एंड फ्लोरल फॉर्म्स फॉर मोस्ट नाउन्स आर ऑल्सो फाउंड इन बम्बई या हिंदी इन सच केसेस द कॉन्टेक्स डिसम्बिक्यूएट्स द मीनिंग occasionally an adjective of quantity such as bahut meaning a lot or sab meaning all is also used to convey plurality finally we turn to, to the process of grammaticalization as an explanation for processes of language change in contact situations grammatical grammaticalization is a diachronic process in which lexical items in a language acquire grammatical functions and grammatical words become more grammatical in nature grammatical replication or pattern replication in contact situations has been explained in terms of the process of grammaticalization let us illustrate what this means with an example from a classic study by natkarni in 1975 He examined the syntax of relativization in Saraswat Konkani, a new Indo-Aryan language spoken in the Indian state of Karnataka in close proximity of Kannada, which is a Dravidian language. This contact situation is about 4 centuries old and has resulted in bilingualism among the Saraswat Konkanis who are fluent speakers of Kannada, although Kannada speakers rarely speak Konkani. In the course of this contact Konkani speakers have replicated a relative construction of Kannada. Here is the example where Kannada has the construction yavo mudukanu paper odutta iddano avanu doctorannu iddane Saraswat Konkani has the construction khanso mataro paper vatsat assa ki to doctoru assa This could be classed as the old man who's reading a newspaper is a doctor the replicated saraswat konkani construction would be judged as ungrammatical in other konkani dialects that is dialects that have not been influenced by kannada the kannada relative construction has been described by heiner and kuteva to be the result of the grammaticalization of two interrogative constructions the interrogative yava which turned into a relative adjective and the element o is a marker of polar that is yes no questions which turned into a relative clause final element accordingly if the relative clause in the first kannada sentence is uttered without yava a polar question a polar question results yava modukano paper odutta iddano is the old man reading a newspaper and if the polar question marker o is omitted is omitted the result is a word question which old man is reading a newspaper a wh question in that case thus kannada thus kannada speakers appear to have combined two interrogative strategies to create this relative clause construction exactly this process was replicated in the konkani dialect the ksk overity influenced by kannada According to Heiner and Kuteva, replica grammaticalization has resulted in total structural isomorphism between the two genetically unrelated languages. To summarize this module, we saw that the particular process and outcomes of language contact are functions of the socio-historical context in which contact takes place. They depend on the demography, nature of bilingualism, social relations among populations intensity and frequency of communication and such other factors we also looked at the relation between contact linguistics on the one hand 
and genetic and typological classification of languages on the other. And finally, we noted the processes of language change in contact situations.